The race for 2024 is heating up. A brand new poll showing Donald Trump still dominating the GOP field as the top choice for nearly 60% of Republican voters. Fox News contributor and our friend, former GOP Congressman Jason Chaffetz, joins us now. So let's take a look at this poll. Welcome, Jason. Uh, let's take a look at this poll. What do you make of this? I mean, they keep, we've got four indictments and a mugshot, and the numbers keep growing. What does it tell you about the Republican voter? And what does it show you about what's going to happen in the general? I, I think the Democrats have way overstepped 91 indictments against the former president of the United States. I think most people see that as excessive, non, not necessary. Um, and it bolsters up Donald Trump. And it, it creates all kinds of problems for all the rest of the people in the field. They can't get the oxygen to actually go out there and make the case. And Donald Trump's numbers get stronger and stronger. But if you're one of those competitors, particularly Governor Ron DeSantis, I think you got to be able to say, hey, look, you can't win in the general election, Mr. President. That's his case to be made. And if you look at the state by state polls like Georgia and Iowa and Wisconsin, some key vital states, he's going to say, I do better than you do in a general election against Joe Biden. Now, whether or not ultimately every voter buys into that, but that's his story. So what is in the mindset? I mean, you you touch and talk to a lot of people out there yeah. and travel a lot. Um, you're a former congressman, of course. What is going on in the minds of if you're a Democrat trying to understand why would Republicans vote more for Donald Trump after an indictment and after a mugshot that I think they thought was going to be a fatal blow to Donald Trump's campaign. What's in the mindset of the Republican voter that they that, that more of them are flocking to Trump? Because they recognize that you have a Department of Justice that has been weaponized. It's an unequal application of justice. The way they treat Hunter Biden, the Bidens, Hillary Clinton, you name it, on the Democratic side of the aisle, they treat it so differently than they do Donald Trump, for goodness sake. I mean, it's it just case after case. So they've emboldened Donald Trump. They don't understand why, you know, don't even begin to understand what Republicans feel about just application of law, liberty, it's, you know, right, so you self-determination. It's they, they, And they like the way when Donald Trump was president, energy prices were low. The economy was good. The world was safer. They, people like that. And they... They didn't forget about it conveniently two and a half years after it happened. Do you think it is for many of those voters existential where they think if Donald Trump, if they could do this to him, they're coming after that there's a two tier yeah. system of justice that that I'm going to be, you know, I'm a dis, I'm going to feel like a dissident in my own country or I do feel like one. Yeah, they think they're coming after their their liberty. They're, they're coming after their way of life. They're going after moms, for goodness sake. The Department of Justice targeting mothers and people that care about their kids at school. And, and the American people feel that. And what's also interesting about this poll, the poll over overwhelmingly said the majority of people don't want Joe Biden or Donald Trump to, to run. But they are the two that? leaders. I, I, I can't. I can't explain. <laughs> I mean, it's so interesting, it right? But it is interesting. I, I think on the case of Joe Biden, he is too old. His cognitive capabilities have diminished. And there's just a set of people that just will, will never he run, Will he be the ultimate Oh, I don't Canada? think so. Who I, will that be? I, I, I don't know. But I think by the end of the calendar year, I've said for a long time, the end of the calendar year, I don't think Joe Biden's the president. He has, you know, he has less than 10 campaign staffers on Joe Biden for president. He's not exactly working hard, and he's not even going to the swing states that are really important. He took a trip out west. He came to Utah. We love having him in Utah, but you know what? He didn't go to Montana. He didn't go to Nevada. Yeah, he didn't that's go to so Colorado. And only 10 staffers. That does say a lot about. Yeah. You may be right. You may be right. I hope we so. may have a vice. We may have a president Kamala before no. the end of the term. No. I think no. I think you just broke some news on that. No, let's not do that. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> All right. So uh, we have Sunday Morning Futures. You're hosting. You, it's always a great lineup on that show. So what do you have this weekend? Well, look, uh, I, I, duck and cover, America. Congress goes back into session this mm. week. So we have Senator Marsha Blackburn. Uh, we got Mike Gallagher, who's the chairman of the uh, looking at China and everything that's going on in there. Claudia Tenney uh, that's coming on and the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Jason Smith, uh, Hunter Biden, the Biden investigations, what's going on with China and then the appropriations. How are we going to actually fund the government by, government by the end of the month? Big show. Love the guests. It's going to be good. And a great host. So make Thank sure you, you tune in right after the show. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Jason. Hey, it's Will Kane. 
click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Kane podcast for full episodes right now. Right now on the story, we're awaiting an update from the White House briefing room. This comes as House Oversight Republicans now say they have a lot of questions about alias email accounts President Biden used during the Obama administration. The National Archives confirms the existence of over 5,000 emails in which then-Vice President Biden used a pseudonym to conduct official business. The New York Post reports an aide used one of the alias accounts to send Hunter Biden his dad's daily schedule. This included information at the time about a call with Ukraine's president. This at the same time as Hunter was serving on the board of Ukrainian energy company Burisma. So Republicans are now demanding the National Archives turn those emails over in the interest of public transparency. So let's bring in House Oversight Committee member, South Carolina Republican Nancy Mace. Congresswoman, thanks for being with me this afternoon. I want to make sure um, that I understand the fundamental issue that the committee has right now with this tranche of newly discovered emails, it seems to me that the biggest grievance is with the timing. Um, The emails coincide, you know, time when when President Biden was serving as vice president, managing the U.S.-Ukraine bilateral relationship at the same time as his son was taking in money from a Ukrainian energy company. It's the fact that the timing is at the crux of this. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's just the start of it. And thank you, Jillian, for having me on this afternoon. Um, President Biden has thrown his country under the bus, and he's been forced to lie about uh, his activities with his son, Hunter, and his son's businesses every time he's been asked about it. And uh, all this could be cleared up if Hunter Biden and Joe Biden wanted to come to the Oversight Committee and testify before our committee under oath. But we have to get access to these emails. The president will not answer the questions, and when he does, he lies about it. We want to make sure that uh, we have all the information. Um, The DOJ has not done their job with an investigation, and it's our job to do their job for them at this point because of the way things are going. And every time we turn over a stone, we look under the rug, we look under a rock, We find more evidence of potential bribery, money laundering, et cetera, and none of it happens without Joe Biden. Has, I understand that the National Archive has not yet complied with Chairman Comer's request to get the actual uh, unredacted text of these emails, but have, has the Archive said to the committee that they're not going to do that, they don't plan to do that in the future, or is that possibility still on the table? They could come through. I have not heard confirmation one way or the other, but we're talking about over 5,000 emails. And if Joe Biden, with the pseudonym, if Joe Biden did nothing wrong, why lie about it? If Joe Biden did nothing wrong, why use a pseudonym? Why use all these fake emails um, to, to conduct business potentially with his family members who are raking in tens of millions of dollars, if not more. And I want to tell you, Jillian, these emails are very important, but the bank records are even uh, equally or more important, because this would show all the layering that was happening, where the money was going, where it was coming from, and would confirm the things that we saw in the suspicious activity reports with the Treasury. And the amount of money that we're talking about here is staggering. I mean, we're, it's it's mind blowing the kind of things that were happening according to the SARS reports that we then need to verify via email, um, via these pseudonyms, via the bank records, all of the things we need to get our hands on it. Isn't it the case, Congresswoman, that prior presidents over the last couple of decades, modern presidents who have used email, uh, have widely adopted the practice of using these alias email accounts so that they can sort of conduct personal business, they can talk to their, I don't know, their friends and family outside the Oval Office? I don't have the history of it. I do know that other agency heads have done that. We've, we saw Hillary Rodden Clinton do that in the past. Um, I wouldn't be surprised by that uh, at all. I mean, they, I, I use, sometimes use a pseudonym when I'm having things shipped to my house so I can keep my, my, uh, my home address, you know, safe from prying eyes. But I, I totally get that. But um, this is a man who has lied to media. He's uh, not been honest with the uh, business within his family. He denied his son was doing business with China, ended up that he was. There are grandchildren that have a lot of money from communist countries like China that we've seen in bank and in, uh, in the sisters activity reports. There are just a lot of unanswered questions right now. And I do believe that those emails would give us some answers. 
Uh, before I let you go, Congresswoman, I want to check in uh, with you about your district. I know that parts, mm -hmm. at least, were hit. All of Florida has been impacted, you know, by the storm. But how are your constituents doing? We it is sunny. We're at the beach right now, and I see sunshine and no rain. We did have uh, several thousand lose power. Their power is largely back on. The thing that was different with this storm is we had a number of tornadoes that touched down yesterday afternoon before the hurricane even got here. But we were. We have no uh, no fatalities. Uh, folks are safe, and our community is already, for the most part, cleaned up. We're very grateful that we dodged a bullet here today. That's probably our best news of the hour. We're very glad to hear it. Thanks so much, Congressman. Congressman, for taking time. Thank you, time Jillian. With us. So much.